Well, I'm finding some very interesting connections between the Norse and Christian mythology in regards to the divine male and female twin souls. And I'm not surprised because it's the same information that I'm finding in the Hindu mythology and also in the ancient Egyptian information. And this is because this is one of the most profound events in the cycle that we exist within. And that is the reuniting of the divine male and female twin souls to be illuminated by divine wisdom and then in turn illuminate others. And so we see the story of the divine twin souls repeated in all of the scripture and all of the mythology. And even though there has been an agenda by the establishment to hide this truth from us, when we know what we are looking for, it is very easy to start understanding what all of this scripture and mythology was actually about. And so we can even see these similarities in Jesus and Mary Magdalene and Oda and Freya. Now, what we're seeing here is a representation of the divine male and female twin souls shown in the physical form. And as such, we have Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Now, if we're seeing Jesus and Mary Magdalene symbolized in the ethereal form, that becomes Christ or Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary. Now, with Oda and Freya, we see that this is how they symbolize the divine male and female twin souls in the physical. But if we are to see them represented in the ethereal, they become Odin and Frigga. Now, what I find interesting is that the name Jesus and Oda and Jesus Christ and Odin are all very closely related. And this is because it is the divine male twin soul that is the Ark of the Covenant. He is the receptacle for divine knowledge and therefore he is very closely linked to Orion, to Odin, to Osiris, to God. And this is why we don't see the name changing too much between the divine male in the physical and the divine male in the ethereal. Because when you look at the word Oda, it actually translates to Odin. And then when you see, as I mentioned before, uh, the divine male and female soul in the ethereal, they become Odin and Frigga. Now, it's really interesting to see that even the depiction of the divine male and female soul in these paintings is very similar. We see that Jesus and Oda are actually standing almost in the same way. They say they have the same leg forward. And we see that Mary Magdalene and Freya are actually reaching out the same arm towards the divine male soul in each painting as well. Now, what's interesting is that we see Mary Magdalene carrying a container. Now, this is actually the Holy Grail, and this is because Mary Magdalene is the Holy Grail. And if you are familiar with the Gnostic texts and the Cathars, this is what they said of Mary Magdalene. They revered Mary Magdalene and held Mary Magdalene in the highest regard because they believed she was the Holy Grail. And therefore, Jesus is the Ark of the Covenant. And this is what we see even represented in the divine twin souls in the Norse mythology. Because when we see Odin with the runes and the runes are bestowed upon him, God's knowledge is bestowed upon Odin when he is hung from the tree and that information comes to him. But in the Norse mythology, it is Freya that actually teaches Odin how to use the magic. And that magic is called cedar. And it isn't only taught to Odin by Freya, but cedar, which is this magic, is also taught by Freya to the pantheon of gods. So she is a teacher and an under, you know, has an understanding for this divine 
information, this divine knowledge. And this is exactly what we see repeated over and over again in each of the mythologies, even in the Hindu mythology, when we see Shiva and Shakti. And I'll be bringing more information about that mythology as well. However, the Hindu mythology is very laid and very in-depth. So when I have more information, I will definitely be uploading a video, but I am still researching. But I'm also finding that this information about the male being the Ark of the Covenant and the receptacle for God's knowledge, divine knowledge, is unlocked by the female divine soul. And so this is represented in all of the mythology. So we see this repeated from Mary Magdalene to Freya, that it is both Mary Magdalene and Freya that teaches the magic or has the understanding for this information. Now, the other interesting uh, information we have is if we look at the um, mirroring of the way that Jesus and Mary Magdalene mirror each other. This is also showing us that the divine male soul and the divine female soul are mirroring each other. They are a mirror. Now, I find it interesting that when we look to the religious information about Mary Magdalene and Lilith, and Lilith is also representative of the divine female soul and Adam is the divine male soul, and when we see this information, we always see that these women are demonized. And we see that Lilith is actually called um, a demonic goddess that actually eats children. However, when we look at the story of Lilith, it shows us that Lilith was Adam's first wife. And in fact, she was attached to Adam's back until they were manifest on the physical and split. So this is clearly showing us the story of and the process of the twin souls splitting and basically incarnating as male and female onto the physical plane. But we see part of the story with Lilith is that she becomes angered at Adam when she is not seen as his equal. Now this is symbolic for when we start moving into times of lower consciousness. So when we are in times of higher consciousness and we remember our divinity and we remember that we are equal, that male and female are equal on every level, including intellectually, what happens is as we start moving down into lower consciousness, we forget our divinity. And because the male is manifest onto the physical plane in the foundational physical attributes, he is more connected to the foundation than he is to the ethereal. So he forgets his divinity first. However, the female, because she is actually closer to the ethereal, she understands who she is. And when the males start descending into this time of lower consciousness, they naturally move into their more physical attributes and they naturally start giving into the temptation of using those attributes to overpower the female. So it's not something that's done consciously, it's something that's done as part of a cycle. And this is what we then see when Lilith leaves the garden in anger because she is no longer seen as Adam's equal. This is why Lilith leaves in anger because she wants to remain as Adam's equal, as she knows she is, because in the ethereal, we are all equal. Our souls are all equal. It's only our physical attributes that start to differentiate us more in a way of physical power, because women in the physical tend to be more the nurturer and the life giver, whereas the male tends to be the foundation, the protector, and, you know, has those roles. So this is why we see the, the males descending into this overpowering state of being. It's because of lower consciousness and it's because they are already more connected to their physical attributes. 
This is why Lilith leaves the garden. And so what the church and the Antichrist have done have gone on to take that information and manipulate that information, mix it in with mythology about the moon, which is what I can see they have done in the Zohar. And this is because we have to understand that the interpretations of the Zohar are done by a male, okay? And so there is no way that these males have a full understanding of this scripture or any of the symbolism. It's just not possible for them to have this understanding. And as I said, due to the fact that a lot of these rabbi and priest, even if they are nice people, have still been indoctrinated from the time of birth to believe that it is the males with the knowledge, it is the male that front the church, it is the male that are the priests, it is the male with the power. Well, that mentality just naturally permeates through everything that they interpret, all of the scripture. And so, unfortunately, what we keep actually getting from these religious institutions and these rabbis and priests is just more regurgitation of manipulated and twisted texts. And they have completely removed the importance of the female and they've put her in the background because that is the agenda for them to have the ability to keep control, to keep it, to keep themselves in power. And so, unfortunately, what I've seen with the Zohar is that the interpretations are really very manipulated. They have not basically relayed the information about the divine female and the divine male soul. They all want to make it about something uh, spiritual and something internal and on a level of consciousness. But we have to understand that this plays out in the physical and that is the most profound and important part of all of this mythology and scripture is explaining that this plays out in the physical and that this is a process that happens also in the physical and we have to understand why wouldn't it be God wants a drama God experiences himself through us so of course this would play out in a physical process also but this is something that the Antichrist and the religious corporations and institutions have wanted to keep hidden. They do not want anybody understanding the true importance of the female in everything, especially when it comes to understanding knowledge and information. But also they do not want to lose power when they have people believing that we have to go through them to get to God and the actual fact is that we all have our own connection to God and we all are ethereal, we're not physical. Well, the religious institution wants you to believe that you're just physical, you're limited, you're lacking, you're finite. The truth is you're ethereal, you're infinite, you're immortal, you're powerful and this is what we learn with this information. So this is why they continue to demonize the female. Isn't it interesting that it's Mary Magdalene and Lilith, the independent, powerful, outspoken females that are demonized. Yet it is the Virgin Mary and Eve that are the ones they push at us. And this is because they're demure and they're the nurturers and they're, you know, very much the embodiment of the more passive qualities of the female. So this works for their agenda. Anyway, I will leave it there, but I just thought it was very interesting and I am finding a lot of connections between the Norse and Christian mythology and also the Hindu mythology. So I will continue to bring this information forward as I research. So I'll leave it all there and uh, as always, guys, Peace out.